toadstool leathers from the genus Sarcophyton are some of the most recognizable soft corals. Their name comes from their mushroom-like appearance. Toadstools are known for both being relatively easy to keep and growing to impressive size when mature. Although there are over 40 different species of Sarcophyton, they all have the same general structure. They have a single stalk that opens out into a flat cap, giving it that mushroom appearance. Some varieties of toadstool leathers have short tentacles, while others have very, very long ones that make the coral almost look like a bushy carpet. These soft corals in some ways resemble a carpet anemone and have been known to host clownfish. While the vast majority of toadstool leathers are very hardy, there's always exceptions to the rule. Sarcophyton elegans is a yellow species from Fiji. This one is a muted yellow in color, however, I've seen other ones that are very bright canary yellow. Unlike their hardier brethren, the yellow Fiji leathers can be difficult to care for. They bruise very easily from contact, which then leads to a blackened coloration and infection. They're notoriously difficult to propagate for this reason as well. Let's talk a little bit about care requirements. For lighting, sarcophyton leathers do not require as much light as some other corals. Most do well in par ranges from 50 to 100. Having said that, they can be acclimated to higher intensities, and some species need that intense light to achieve their brightest colors. As for circulation, water flow is especially important for this toadstool leather because these leathers routinely shed a waxy layer about once a month. This waxy layer looks like cellophane, and its purpose is to stave off algae and diatoms from growing on it. If you see your toadstool close up like this, don't worry too much. It's normal, and strong flow helps periodically remove this layer. When the toadstool comes out after shedding, it often swells up and extends even more than before. Lastly, let's talk about feeding. I personally do not go out of my way to feed toadstool leathers. I've heard that they feed on phytoplankton and similarly sized microfauna in the water column. Just for fun, we made a cocktail of some planktonic powders, including reefroids and coral frenzy, as well as powdered sustainable aquatics pellets. And we offered it to this leather. Now, the coral might be taking in some of this food here and there, but it's not really clear to me. It may be a situation where it has to be fed live phytoplankton to really get the coral eating. In the future, we will likely be providing some light dusting as we feed our other corals. Care tips would not be complete without some mention of potential toxicity. Yes, these toadstools can be toxic to other corals. A recurring theme on the reef is that all corals are trying to get more real estate for themselves. Some corals engage in open combat, like this maize brain using sweeper tentacles. Large leathers are not quite so bold. They're like that passive-aggressive coworker that sabotages you at every turn. You know who I'm talking about. Toadstool leathers engage in chemical warfare. Although they're not the most toxic variety of leathers out there, the toxins associated with large toadstool leathers can shut down the growth of neighboring stony corals. There are three solutions I can suggest to dealing with the buildup of toxins from soft corals. First is by far the least expensive and also has tremendous other benefits. Do more water changes. Water changes both dilute toxins from the leathers as well as excess nutrients that may lead to declining water quality. If you're worried about chemical warfare, this is by far the easiest route. Second, you could run activated carbon. Carbon does a pretty good job of binding up and neutralizing organic compounds in the water. It's also relatively inexpensive and can be used very effectively in conjunction with the reactor. Lastly, you might consider running ozone. 
Ozone is not a very popular technology in reef aquariums, but it certainly has its place in very large aquariums where carbon would not be cost effective. Ozone injection usually occurs in conjunction with a protein skimmer. It reacts with all sorts of compounds in the water, which then gets skimmed right out. The result is a combination of sterilization and the breakdown of chemicals in the water column. The benefit of ozone is that it makes the water crystal clear. All right, that pretty much sums it up for toadstool leather corals. Thanks for watching, you guys. If you have any questions about toadstools, go ahead and leave a comment. Until next time, happy reefing.